G'day, my name's Brian from Bijan Tech. We're going to look at this Dell Precision 5470. It's Dell's latest addition to the Precision family. It's also celebrating 25 years of the Precision line as well. So this is a special one. This is a 14 inch mobile workstation and we're going to get straight into it. Now, as always, I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to a different section that you may be interested in just to save you time. Now, first off, what is the configurations? With the processor, it is the 12th gen Intel Core and it's a H series processor. You can get anywhere between an i5 all the way up to an i9. As for the memory, it has a maximum capacity of 64 gigs and they are soldered to the system board as I would expect for a very thin and light laptop like this. So make sure you select the correct amount of RAM that you need as you can't upgrade this later on. As for storage wise, it has one slot of M.2 NVMe PCIe and it is a 2280 format. As for the graphics, besides the integrated graphics, which is the RSXE, it also has a discrete graphics, which is the NVIDIA RTX A1000. There are two options for the display. You can get either a Full HD Plus or a Quad HD Plus. Now they both have an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 and they both are rated to have a luminance or brightness of 500 nits. With the Full HD Plus, it is a matte style display and as for the Quad HD Plus, it is a glossy display finish. And the one I tested was the Quad HD Plus. When I tested out the Quad HD Plus outdoors in direct sunlight, you do get a bit of glare uh, from the glossy display, but Having a brightness of 500 nits, it's still able to clearly read text and also consume multimedia without too much issues. If you're in shaded areas, you shouldn't have any issues seeing the display quite clearly. Measuring the color gamma coverage of the Quad HD Plus display with touch, it has a rating of 500 nits of brightness and it did measure in at 502 nits. It resulted with 99.8% sRGB coverage, 76.9% Adobe RGB coverage, and 81.9% DCI P3 coverage. As for the backlight, I didn't find much light leak around the edges at all. The 5470 comes with a 72 watt hour battery, and then I tested the battery life. It managed to get 10 hours and 5 minutes for office applications, 1 hour and 29 minutes for gaming and 8 hours and 48 minutes for video playback. This is a recording from the 720p webcam from the Dell Precision 5470. This is the video and audio unedited so you can hear and see what the quality webcam is like. As always, I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got my one studio light turned on, also the downlights in this room turned on for ambience. I'm going to turn off my one studio light off, and this adjusted, I think it adjusted pretty quick. Now I've got two downlights in front of me, which is bit far away so there's not much light hitting on my face. So if you're in an office environment you have much more light than what I'm currently at. I'm going to turn my one studio light back on and it adjusts and of course a better quality light gives you better quality picture. Now I do also hope that Dell actually gives us a 1080p option as there's only a 720p option. We are in 2022 now. It'd be nice to have a 1080p option as we do have better internet and also for video content and also the content creation will be definitely much more nicer having a 1080p webcam. I'd definitely love to hear what your thoughts are of this webcam. Put a comment below. There are four speakers in total. There are two top firing speakers and there are also two bottom firing speakers which are located on the bottom front of the laptop. And when I tested out the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure in a peak of 90.1 decibels, which I would consider this on the upper end of the mid-range of compared to other laptops for speakers. So it is quite decently loud and you shouldn't have any issues if you're doing a presentation at a cafe or outdoors. Now as for sound quality of the speakers, I consider these better than the 15 and the 17 inch of the XPS or the precision range. So they have been improved. They have better clarity than the 15 and 17 inch versions. It's got quite a bit of bass, but still the low end frequency bass could be improved as it's not really there like the Max. It needs a little bit more fuller in terms of overall acoustics, but still got great acoustics of 360 degrees. And as for the mids and highs, we've got good, strong mids and highs. Audio sample of the speakers of the 5470 at 100% volume. 
when I took my measurement, my ambient temperature was 17 degrees Celsius and the ambient room noise was 36 decibels. Now, before we'll give you numbers, I'll just give you a bit of reference points. Your average hand is anywhere between 33 to 34 degrees Celsius. So you can hopefully give you an idea on how hot or how cool this laptop could be. So I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle. So the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 34 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it stayed at 36 decibels. So it's practically quiet. And the average internal core temperature was 51 degrees Celsius. Then I'll put 20% load on the computer. So that's average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work, streaming video, surfing the web, and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 40 degrees Celsius. And the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 40 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 37 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 66 degrees Celsius. Then I put 50% load on the computer and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in again at 40 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 38 decibels. And as for the average internal core temperature was at 78 degrees Celsius. Then I put 100% load on the computer and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 42 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 49 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 82 degrees Celsius. I also measured the bottom back cover of the computer when it was on 100%. And the hottest area on the back cover was 33 degrees Celsius. Of course, the fan noise stayed at 49 decibels. As for the keyboard, it's pretty much the same look and feel as the 15 inch XPS or the precision from the last three years. It's got quite large keys. It's got good tactile feel to it. Quite a bit of travel distance in each key. And it is quite narrow spacing in between each keys. And as for the surface of each keys, it is quite smooth. And the keyboard is backlit. It's got three settings off, low and high. As for the trackpad, it is absolutely a fantastic, perfect size trackpad. It's not overly large and it's not underly small at all. It is mechanical, so it is hinged at the top and you can depress it as you put it. It's actually quite high where the hinge is. So when you start depressing it, it is only probably about half a centimeter from the top. And it does have a very silky glass texture feel to the surface of the trackpad and of course it is a multi gesture as well looking at the palm rest the dell precision team has decided to feature on the palm rest the carbon weave texture and look to it now i am very subjective to this carbon weave as i've had issues with this over a period long period of time but it does look good but i am a little bit worried about the coating that I've had in the past that from the Dell Precision and the Latitude line that had carbon weave. As after, probably I would say after five or so years, it does get a bit sticky, but they might have a better coating on this. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to find that out. We're gonna have a quick look into internals of the new Dell Precision 5470. First off, we need to unscrew the eight torque screw screws. Now they do require you to have a T5 torque screw screwdriver. So you do need to find one of those special ones. Enough, I've just got to pry it open. Now it is difficult to start to pry this thing open. Normally I say start with the hinge, but this in this case, not really. It's actually done a little bit different. I would actually would suggest is to go from the smart card slot here you'll see the little opening and then work your way across the front and then across the sides and then from the smart card slot and work your way across the other hand rather than start from the hinge. Now I pre-undone this one to speed up time and I'm just gonna have a quick flip this around just so you can see what the back covering and the just the thermal protection they've placed to help on your, if you're putting this on your lap, uh, but just really just to see how, what it looks like, what they've done in a way. So that's kind of cool. and. This is the internals. So first off, we've got the 72 watt hour battery here and the battery connector is right here in the middle. So if you need to work on the battery or even just to diagnose problems or troubleshoot some power issues, it's a good idea to disconnect this battery as well if you're gonna be upgrading or working on this computer. So that's the connector there. Now just have a look at underneath the battery. I've pre-undone the five screws. So they're Philip head screws. And I'll just flip this thing open so you can see that what's underneath the hiding behind the battery. What's going to be more of an interest is this little thing here. This is the NFC reader. So this one has an NFC reader which is 
underneath the trackpad. And if you don't have configured, you won't have this slot. Well, it's not really there at all. And on the right-hand side, we've got the smart card reader slot here, as you can see. And that's really much all there is underneath here. And then I'm just gonna try and pop this thing back to its place. And we'll have a look above. The battery is an M.2 slot for the SSD or PVME. And you can see this is a 2280 format. And it's good to see uh, what I call a heat shield or heat spreader for the SSD. Now, on the right hand side, we've got here is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. It is sold to the system board, so you can't really add that in later on, neither. Now, this is now the twin pipe heat system that they've used. And we've got two thermal fans. And I've also noticed something different as well too. And this is just interesting, just as a notice, is that we've got the discrete graphics on the left-hand side and we've got the processor sitting underneath on the right-hand side. Now this is very similar to the Dell Precision 55,000 series. So the 15-inch Precisions, they're similar sort of fashion. But the 17-inch one, which is the Dell Precision 57 um, series, or actually it's actually flipped around where the the processors on the left and the discrete graphics is on the right so this is very interesting they've copied the 15 inch rather than the 17 inch in this sort of format here's the results of the benchmarks the unit i performed it on was configured with an i7 12700 h processor with 32 gigs of ram one terabyte ssd and the RTX A1000. These results of Passmark, Citibench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, Procon Office, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Hugen Photoshop, Hugen Lightroom, Blender, Luxmark, Furmark, Compute Bench, Octane Bench, Eugene Engine, and Spec View Prep. and some gaming benchmarks like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry New Dawn, Far Cry 6, Immortal Phoenix Rising, and F1 2021. Seeing the results of the performance of the benchmarks and taking consideration of the temperatures and fan noise, Dell has pretty much put the performance of a Dell Position 15 inch in a 14 inch form factor and also making it even smaller as this is a very small size chassis for a 14 inch. So definitely a good job there, Dell. I will be also creating a follow-up video on this Dell Precision 5470 as I will be talking about the computation as well as the stability performance of this Dell Precision 5470. Unfortunately, I've just ran out of time with this computer, but I will be getting it back on my channel. So I will be putting a link in the description below of that video when that is made available. Now, I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you even support my channel, smash that like button for me. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, by hitting that subscribe button on screen, I do try to upload a new video every week. And if you want to support me further, there's also a membership, which is that join button right next to the subscribe button as well. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.